join kids hat family hi tia do you know what happened at school today it was quite saddening though what happened you know how bani keeps bullying everyone in school yes everybody know how notorious he is well yes but today he did something nice and nobody believed that it was him i couldn't understand why everyone behaved like that i can imagine sometimes if you have a bad reputation even the good you do is not believed A hungry horse was looking for food outside the forest. Just then, a wolf came out of the jungle to talk to him. "My friend, are you hungry?" "Yes, I am." "There is a field of oats in the forest. I would be happy to tell you where it is." "Is that true?" "Of course it is." You are my friend and I only want the best for you. Don't you believe me? You are a wolf. I believe you are only telling me about the field of oats because you don't eat oats. If you would eat oats, you'd never tell me about the field. And as much as the wolf tried to convince the horse of his good intention, he couldn't. So you see tofu once you have a poor reputation you try to do something good also nobody believes you yes tia hence we should always do good things Tofu, wolves are known to be clever and cunning. My childhood memories with wolves are quite interesting, especially the story of the wolf and the seven little goats. The wolf and the seven little goats? Wow! I haven't heard that one. Tell me the story, Tia. The wolf and the seven little goats. Once upon a time there lived a mama goat and her seven little kids. This was a happy little home. All the seven little kids used to play in the meadows, into the wild with the butterflies and birds singing along. Their days used to go in complete harmony and bliss. Until one day a big black wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow. Ha ha ha. Such an easy treat they are for me. I haven't eaten since ages. I'm sure these would make delicious lamb chops for my dinner tonight. He waited for the moment when the mother goat would leave her kids alone. patiently hiding in the bushes Children I'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you I'll be back by evening Just make sure you remain conscious of this big bad wolf But mommy how would we know if it's not you The wretched wolf can easily be recognized with his hoarse voice and black feet don't open the door or else you little ones would get into danger don't worry mummy we would take care of ourselves the mother goat went off to the market and the kids made doubly sure with the locks on the door after making sure that they are safe in their little home 
off they went to play when suddenly there was a knock on the door. Hello, my children. Open the door. Your mother is back. Hearing the voice, the youngest one scampered to the door. Mummy, mummy, she's back. In no time, the eldest one ran to catch his little sibling. No, it's not our mummy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. And then, looking at the door, the eldest kid shouted back saying, Go away, you big bad wolf. Our mother doesn't have such a hoarse voice. Hearing this, the wolf got annoyed and ran to get a box of chalk as he had heard that this would make his voice as soft as that of a baby. But kids, you shouldn't do this at any cost as this would only make your tummy ache badly. So off he went and cut off the whole box of chalk. Knocking on the door again, he said, Hello kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads and ginger ale. Oh, that sounds like a mother. Should we open the door now? But look down there. A mother has not got black feet. This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother has not got black feet, but beautiful white feet. Hearing this, the wolf ran to the miller and jumped into the mountain of white dough. He was all white from head to toe. Running back to the house, he knocked again and said, Kids, your mother is back. Open the door. That sounds like a mother and also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to the door and opened it. But just to see who was standing there, the big bad wolf gave a loud laugh and brushed off his white powder. Hello kids, are you ready to become my feast tonight? The kids ran here and there to save their lives. One went inside the kettle, the other in the oven. One looked for a place under the bed and the other tried saving itself by hiding in the pot. The youngest one was so tiny that he managed to hide himself inside the clock case. The wolf, having no mercy, started taking them out from their hidings. One by one, he rolled them in a ball and gulped them up. Ah, there goes the first one. Oh, the second one is under the bed. Here you go. In no time, he ate all the kids except for the youngest one who was hiding in the clock case. With his tummy full, he burped and left the home. When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open and waited for the biggest nightmare that might have come true. The house was all upside down. The crockery was broken. The curtains were torn. The chair was broken. And the kids were nowhere to be found. She cried for them. <laughs> children! Oh children! Where are you? At that very moment, the youngest one came out of the clock case and hugged his mother crying and howling. Oh mother! The bad wolf disguised us by sounding and looking like you. He ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry. Let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled that he slept off in a meadow near the house itself. 
His snores were so loud that even the branches of the tree were shuddering. The mother goat very quietly went near him and asked her youngest kid to get scissors, thread and a needle. Off he went to get them. The mother goat very quietly slit open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. They then filled up his tummy with stones as big as balls and then she stitched the tummy with the thread and the needle. The wolf had such a huge feast after so long and he slept all night. In the morning when he got up, he was so thirsty that he tried running to the well. But his belly was so heavy that he could hardly walk. He picked up his belly and managed to reach the well. But the moment he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight and fell in the well. The kids were looking at all of this from their window and shouted happily. Mommy, mommy, the wolf has died. Now we can play freely outside without any fear. And they lived happily ever after. Now that was one cunning wolf. But Tofu, if you be bad to others, bad happens to you too. Always remember that. Yeah, Tia. Tofu, were you eating those cookies that mum had asked you to have only after dinner? No, Tia, I wasn't. I just came in the kitchen to drink water. Tofu, do you know something? A lie is not fruitful. How, Tia? Come, I have a moral to teach you today. The Boy Who Cried Wolf Once upon a time, there lived a shepherd boy who took care of the sheep in the village. He was very dedicated to his work. Every day, he used to take the herd of sheep to the top of the hill and bring them down by evening. But one day, he felt really bored. I am feeling so bored. All the villagers work together, but here I am, all alone, taking care of the sheep and no one else to talk to. What should I do? Suddenly, he had an idea, a wicked one. He went over the edge of the hill and started shouting. Help! Help! There is a wolf! He is going to eat all our sheep! Help! Hearing the boy cry out for help, all the villagers came to the top of the hill to save the sheep. But reaching there, all they could see were calm sheep grazing the grassland. You silly boy, where is the wolf? Why did you cry out for help? The villagers were very angry and left the place cursing the shepherd boy. <laughs> this was so much fun! Next day, the shepherd boy was back again to the routine of taking the sheep for grazing. 
and yet again he found himself completely bored let's try that prank again <laughs> the boy again went to the hilltop and started shouting help help there is a wolf he's going to eat all our sheep help once again the villagers after hearing the boy cry out for help ran to save the sheep but once again came back after being fooled by the boy this is not right you would have to pay for this one day with no regrets on his face the shepherd boy went back to his sheep one day when he was lying under the tree while his sheep were grazing he saw some sheep running here and there after looking closely he saw a wolf approaching the herd the boy suddenly ran to the edge of the hill and started screaming for help 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 there is a wolf for real this time he's going to eat all our sheep help please help this time the villagers didn't pay any heed to the boy screaming let's leave him this time too he might be playing a prank on us the boy kept on crying for help but no one turned up this time all he could do was stand there and watch his sheep getting killed by the wolf oh i should have not played that prank with the villagers nobody believed me when the wolf actually turned up What should I do now? I have lost all my sheep. The shepherd boy was never trusted ever by anyone. I am sorry, Tia. I did lie about those cookies and now I learned a lesson too. Liars are not believed even when they speak the truth. I won't ever lie again. Good tofu. You are a good boy. Tofu, what are you up to? Uh, nothing much. Just watching TV. Oh, cool. Are you done with your homework already? Uh, we didn't have much homework today. We just have a research assignment. Hmm, I'm impressed. So you finished your research work so soon? Oh no, I haven't. It's a big assignment so we have to do it in pairs. My partner is Kate. She's really good with research, so I passed it all off to her. She will write the paper and bring it tomorrow. I don't know what to say, Tofu. You can say which game you want to play. How about I tell you a story instead? Oh, I love your stories. Please tell me one. This one is about the horse and the donkey, where the horse doesn't bother to help the donkey. Once upon a time there was a poor washerman. All he had was a donkey and a horse. He would use the donkey to carry the load of clothes from the village to the river 
and back. while he would use the horse for himself to go wherever he needed to. The horse enjoyed an easy life, carrying only his master, while the poor donkey did all the hard work. One day, the washerman went to the village to collect clothes from people. Hello, are there any clothes you want to give for washing today? Yes, yes, I have. Thank you. How are you today? I am good, thank you. Do you have any clothes for washing? Yes, I am glad you came. We have too many guests today and excess laundry too. Don't worry, I will have them back in time. Thank you. And so the washerman went from door to door collecting clothes for washing. Then he loaded everything onto his donkey. We have a big job in front of us today. We have more clothes to wash than every other day. We'll have to hurry up. As soon as he got the donkey loaded up, they started moving towards the river. The washerman decided to walk besides the horse and the donkey. But the load was too much for the donkey to carry, so he got very tired. When they were halfway through to the river, the washerman decided to stop to get some rest. He too was tired, having walked all the way instead of riding the horse as usual. That's when the donkey decided to talk to the horse. Horse, can you please help me? This load is too heavy to carry. Since the master is walking today and you have no burden to carry, can you take some of mine? I am here to serve my master, not you. It's not my job to carry the load. It's yours and you alone must do it. The donkey had no choice but to carry the burden of the clothes all alone. So he continued walking slowly when they resumed their journey. But after some time, the weight became too much for him and he collapsed. He tried to get up again but just couldn't. Oh no! What's wrong with my donkey? Let me get his weight off him first. The caring washerman removed the bags and bundles of clothes from the donkey. Oh, these bags are very, very heavy. It was wrong of me to put them on the donkey alone. Now he is very tired. He will not be able to carry this burden anymore. I will put everything on the horse. 
Saying so, he put all the bags and bundles on the back of the horse. Let's give the donkey some rest today. They started walking again towards the river. As they walked, the horse realized what a mistake he had made. This is so heavy. I wish I had not been so selfish earlier. If I had shared the donkey's load when he asked me to, I wouldn't have to carry all this by myself. From now on, I will always share the burden. So you see, Tofu, it's always more sensible to share the burden than to not help others. Yes, I agree with you, Tia. In fact, if I help Kate out, we will be able to finish the work faster as well and both will be free soon. That's right, Tofu. So you see, sharing the burden of work has many advantages. You must go and help Kate out. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.